an order of magnitude beyond what LTA was saying we should have. Why? Well, we sat down, we did some numbers, and that was well before the iPhone crunch really happened. We started, uh, you know, writing down the LTA, the INTA requirements, and we figured out they need or they want their one megahertz, uh, one megabit per second per square kilometer capacity density. Then we started seeing, well, you know, what do we really need? We just go to urban areas, central Barcelona, central Madrid, Berlin, uh, Mumbai, the really dense areas, New York, London, and we figured out the minimum average you need is 800 megabits per second per square kilometer uh, in, in, in terms of capacity density. Well, that is like a factor 10 beyond what <coughs> IMTA was asking for. Uh, things have gotten worse, probably it's a fact of 20, 50, 100 today uh, if you look at the capacity needs. Next question we embarked on is how do you best design your system? What, how do you go about it? And uh, we just looked at the past history, how capacity has evolved, and we understood that the majority of the capacity gains, uh, if you factorate this, came actually from making cells smaller. Okay. Uh, it's a fact of 1,600 out of a million, okay? So million has increased over the, uh, the capacity has increased by a factor of 1 million over the past 30, 40 years. 1,600 is due to smaller cells. Uh, it's 25 times due to the spectrum. It's five times due to the improved physical air. So we understood very quickly that, you know, we shouldn't focus too much on the physical air. We should play a little bit with the, with the spectrum, but really the main emphasis should be on the spatial distribution of the architecture. What we did is, we did a kind of, um, I call it a, a, a cost water filling. So instead of putting elements with an equal cost all over the network, trying to, uh, to support the capacity needs, we decided to have one element in the network which is really expensive. Okay, one element which is really expensive, it does all the job, all the intelligent, and loads of small elements which are really cheap. And this is how we did it. So we designed a, what we call a hub base station. It's quite a beast. It's not one of these small base stations, you know. It's spatially maybe that big. Um, apart from that, it's very powerful, very intelligent. It actually... Uh, uh, contains a very aggressive beamformer, so we have a very high spatial reuse. We put it on a tall building here. We illuminate the city with uh, very narrow beams, and we put essentially the chief elements, which are our access base station, <coughs> below rooftop on lamp posts. You know, you see this coming more and more, and this is what we essentially did. The next uh, most expensive thing was essentially the backhaul. So we just got rid of the wired backhaul. We made it wireless. Now, wireless, you pay quite a lot of licenses if you use license bands, so we decided, okay, let's go to the license extend band. So we started work on uh, really aggressive microwave uh, reuse, so we worked with an Israeli company called uh, Ciclo, who has done that. So we started simulating that architecture, and I don't want to go into details, I just want to show you that we really have done, you know, some math and some simulation. It's turned out, yes, we can meet this capacity, then we started building the beast. So Elvarian, uh, who happens to be a WiMAX manufacturer, but they're doing all of LT equipment now as well. So they built one part of the network, Ciclo, another company, another part. Cobham Antennas built the antennas. Uh, CTPC built the MIMO part. So we, we built the equipment. Um, we went to the standards. So we standardized the whole architecture because we found it's a very <coughs> neat piece of design and it's part of Etsy, uh, Etsy brand architecture right now. And then we just did it. <coughs> so we uh, proved it's working uh, at a capacity density of one gigabit per second per square kilometer in Tel Aviv. In April, just came back uh, a month ago. We uh, essentially proved the viability. We had quite a lot of press release there, so we drove around, uh, you know, video downloads, simultaneous video downloads. We did all the calculations. And it turns out the architecture just works really what it promised to do. So concluding, now then one of the big challenges is, particularly in the telecom world, is we're always running behind the capacity. Okay, so if you go to the computing computing domain, you know you rarely see somebody really talking about a, a big capacity problem. We always talk about capacity problems. So one of the aims we're trying to do is here just you know have an architecture in place. 
which lets us forget, at least for a while, to talk about capacity, to overdimension the network a little bit, so we can really play with the, uh, with the killer applications. Uh, we decided to focus on the architecture, and we feel, and I haven't provided this here in these slides, says that self-organizing networking mechanisms are really key to that. Because you will have a lot of, a lot of small elements running your, your capacity crunch, and uh, you really need to organize them, and you can only do that in a self-organizing manner. So here you are, the architecture on the table. If you have more, more interest in that, uh, in that architecture, just contact me, contact Albert. We have all the slides. It's LTE or YMAX agnostic, so it's um, really a general design, really cost efficient, by a factor of six to seven cheaper than what is currently out there, uh, very spectrally efficient and autonomous. So thank you very much. That's the answer essentially. How do we meet the capacity needs? At very, very low cost. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. Uh, fantastic. Visit cttc.es for more information.